well as former Sooner head coach, the King Barry Switzer, might put it, let's hang half a hundred and go home. <laughs> and certainly during his coaching days for the Sooners, uh, OU uh, did that um, quite a few times against Iowa State. They would hang at least half a hundred points and then go home. Well, Bob Stoops did likewise last night at Gaylord Memorial in Norman as the Sooners put 52 on the board against the Cyclones, and it would have been 59, but second to the last play, Sooners looked like they had a touchdown, but Daniel Brooks got stopped at the uh, half-yard line. Then the Sooners uh, took a knee, did the uh, noble thing, and called the dogs off. And 52 points, yeah, I guess that'll do, right? <laughs> yeah, 36-point win for the Sooners, 52-16 to after a 21-9 to halftime score. But even at that point, and I'll get into this in depth later, I still didn't think the Sooners were in danger of losing the game. Um, they just needed to work out some, some kinks in that second quarter. Um, but more about Oklahoma-Iowa State in a second as the Sooners 8-1 and one now overall and 5-1 uh, and one in Big 12 play. By the way, 8-1, and one, that 8 win total, that equals last year's uh, win total for the Crimson and Cream. Of course, Sooners got that big game coming up in Waco against Baylor on Saturday. Uh, but before I talk about that game and recapping the OU-Iowa State game as well, I have to give a big shout-out, a big thank you to my brother and to my uh, sister-in-law. Weeks ago, they asked me if I wanted to go to the Oklahoma-Iowa State game, and I graciously said yes. Um, unfortunately, um, the two of them could not make it to last night's game, so they also asked if I wanted to take my son um, and mom to the game as well. And, of course, uh, they were both delighted to go. So uh, last night, uh, we got to go uh, to the game, got very good seats, and again, I want to thank my brother and sister-in-law for making last night's uh, trip to the game uh, possible. Um, again, the seats were fantastic. We got to see the players up close. And we got to talk to some uh, fantastic fans uh, surrounding us as well. Great environment. And we had a wonderful time, a time that we won't forget. So the Sooners and the Cyclones. And if you watch this game, you know that um, early on, you know, Iowa State showed some, some good balance. Um, OU trying to get a feel for the game, and um, Iowa State was able to run and pass effectively. But that did not happen too often on Saturday night. Iowa State got that early field goal, and that was the only time the Cyclones led. As the Sooners on that opening uh, play, their first play from scrimmage, you wait for the perfect time to call a trick play, and Bob Stoops and company, you know, Lincoln Riley, you got to give them credit. Perfect time was that opening play. You know, the Sooners' first play, you know, with the flea flicker that started with P. Ryan, then went... Uh, the Shepherd flipped it to Mayfield, and Mayfield finding a wide open Dimitri Flowers, and it was an easy touchdown pass, 75 yards, and the Sooners would you know score on that play and would score on two more possessions in that first quarter. The big play was so prevalent for um, Oklahoma on Saturday night that they racked up nearly 700 yards of total offense, and they did this in spite of the fact that they did this on less than 70. Uh, less than 73 plays. Um, they averaged nearly 10 yards a play and only had the ball, believe it or not, for, um, for 26 and a half minutes. So even though Iowa State had the time of possession advantage by about seven minutes, it really didn't matter because it was, quali it was quality and not quantity that mattered in last night's game. And, you know, so many Sooners played a big role in last night's uh, route, but Baker Mayfield, my goodness, didn't he serve up a, a fantastic game? Was he on his game or what? I would say positively uh, with his performance. Remember the week before against Kansas, only four incomplete passes and in a, a big game both passing-wise and TD-wise. Well, last night it was the same thing. You know, 32 uh, passing attempts, completed 75% of them. Four TDs he was accountable for, three of them through the air. Um the thing that amazed me the most watching Baker Mayfield up close and personal was just the command that he has for the offense, his emotion that he plays with, his attitude, and how his teammates feed off of that. Um, another thing that you love about Mayfield, and last night was indicative of this, last year, you know, no disrespect to Trevor Knight at all, but Knight was really glued into Sterling Shepard, you know, the number one receiver last year. He's still the number one receiver for the team this year. But Mayfield's proof that you don't have to go to Sterling Shepard all the time. You can distribute it to other players. And last night, the main guy as far as passing completions was Deron Neal. He had 10 of them on the night for 75 yards. Now, Shepard was still used. As a matter of fact, he had that big touchdown in the game. He had four catches, had 94 yards, which led all receivers. And, of course, a score. And D.D. Westbrook was a factor, too, with a touchdown and three catches. 
and we also saw too, um, you know, Mark Andrews, the tight end, late in the game off a of Trevor Knight touchdown. And by the way, do you realize something else as well? Do you realize that the first pass that Baker Mayfield threw in the game was for a touchdown, and the first pass that Trevor Knight threw in the game was for a touchdown? Now, isn't that something? Couple more things about Mayfield for this season. How about this? 28 TDs and only four interceptions, averaging 312 yards through the air per game, and still three games to go in the bowl game. So his work far from done. Defensively, boy, did they do an outstanding job last night or what? And I really thought the biggest moments in the game for the defense was in the second quarter when the Sooner offense sputtered. Remember they had that early fumble early in the second quarter, um, you know, in Iowa State territory, and that really seemed to damper Oklahoma's momentum um, for the rest of the second quarter. But the defense at times bended, but never broke. They never allowed a touchdown in that first half. I thought that was important to keep Iowa State at bay and limit them to field goal attempts. And, you know, Iowa State gave them credit for making those field goals by Cole Nitton, but still, um, it was just field goals and not touchdowns. And when you already have 21 on the board, you can live with giving up just threes. And in the second half, of course, the Sooner um, offense uh, finally got back the momentum and put the game on ice. In terms of defense, it was good to see Dakota Austin continue to develop. Him and Amon Thomas had seven tackles apiece leading the team for the Sooners, including an interception. First one that Joe Lanning threw all year long uh, for the Cyclones. Good to see Jordan Evans back from injury. The inside linebacker missed a little bit of time, but he was back. And he played well, along with Devontae Bond, who had missed quite a bit of time, uh, four games as a matter of fact. Um, it's good to see him back at in place since the West Virginia game from the defensive end spot. Still, no Zach Sanchez. Hopefully, you'll have him ready to go at corner for the crucial game against Baylor on Saturday. And Jonathan Alvarez, the offensive guard, didn't play. And you'll need him you know, just as much as you'll need Sanchez on that defensive side. But still, good game for the Sooner defense, keeping Iowa State in check holding them to just over 100 yards of rushing. Iowa State, to have any shot and upset, had to run and had to run the ball well. But other than that opening drive, they really didn't do that. Mike Warren entered this game for Iowa State as the conference's leading rusher. Not only did um, he get contained, uh, but he's no longer the leading rusher in the Big 12. He got held to just 48 yards rushing on 18 carries. And the number one rusher right now, it's going to be the guy that oh, you will see next week, you know, Shock Linwood of Baylor. So, uh, Mike Warren drops from 1-3 to three as far as uh, Big 12 leading rushers go. Sooners did that good of a job. Matter of fact, the best rushers last night, well, they played for the Sooners. You know, Samaje P. Ryan had nearly 100 yards. And by the way, for the year, P. Ryan had over 800 yards on the ground. Joe Mixon, 88 yards on the ground, including a 55-yard touchdown run um, in the uh, third quarter when the Sooners were getting true separation from Iowa State. So defense played extremely well. Offense, they got the big plays. And ran well through even better. So you have to love the way the Sooners looked on Saturday, winning their fourth straight and going to 8-1. So the fourth straight game that the Crimson and Cream scored at least 50 points. Outstanding. And telling you what, you're going to need that point production. Uh, more than likely playing in Waco against Baylor, who remains undefeated. Of course, they played uh, two nights earlier than the Sooners did. And it looked like they were going to have their way with Kansas State, the team that OU beat 55 nothing. But had to hold on for dear life in the end, edging the Wildcats out by uh, seven. But I'm telling you what, quarterback for Baylor looked pretty darn good. And they uh, start as a freshman, uh, Jarrett uh, Stenham. Jarrett Stenham threw for over 400 yards, three TDs, had no interceptions. But again, um, hasn't played as much as uh, the incumbent for uh, this season. That's Seth Russell, of course, who's um, out for the year because of a neck injury. Baylor's going to be favored in this game. You know, college game day from ESPN is going to be in Waco. The game will be in prime time, as a matter of fact, on ABC. So it's going to get a national audience on over-air television. So it's going to have a big, big crowd um, you know, nationwide. And, of course, you know that stadium is going to be rocking green for the most part for the guys from Waco. And, um, you know, that's a place where Baylor has never lost a game before since they opened up that new stadium last year. Even though it's going to be a tough game for the Sooners, and like I said, they'll be an underdog, you know, it's not exactly like, oh, you can't win the game. If they continue to play the way they've been playing for the most part, defensively get some stops, and don't beat yourself. And most important thing, if something bad happens in the game, you don't lose complete control of it. There's a shot that OU can very well you know, beat those guys from Waco. The last two years, you know, Baylor's not only beaten OU, but beaten them 
to a pulp, but it doesn't mean uh, that it has to happen again. Maybe it'll be the Sooners' time. We'll break more of the um, Oklahoma-Baylor uh, game down in uh, just a little bit, um, as in later in the week um, on my weekly matchup show. So uh, make sure to uh, uh, check that out. Again, final score, Oklahoma 52, Iowa State 16. Again, big shout out to my brother and sister-in-law for making it possible for myself along with um, my son and mom. Three generations last night my family got to uh, see a game from a pretty good angle and had a great time in the process. Boomer Sooner.